everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and about 10 years ago I had a lot of bare white yarn that, well, I wanted to be a different color. So I ran to the supermarket, grabbed a few packets of Kool-Aid, and well, the rest is history. And today I'm going to show you another technique that you can use to dye yarn with Kool-Aid at home. We are going to be dip dyeing a skein of Dyer Supplier Sparkle Sock into two different flavors of Kool-Aid to create a fun, variegated colorway. The Sparkle Sock yarn is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 10% Silver Stellina. I am so excited to be featured in Knit Crate's May 2020 Knit Crate and Sock Crate, where the theme is Blank Canvas, and this month they are sending all of their subscribers some bare yarn and some Kool-Aid, so you can create some beautiful colors at home. One of the big perks of dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid is that it is kitchen safe, so I am personally comfortable doing this in the pots and pans that I use for cooking in my kitchen. I even like to bring my kids along and let them help me dye yarn with food coloring and Kool-Aid. To dye yarn with Kool-Aid, you need four main components. You need the Kool-Aid, which contains the artificial food coloring and citric acid that you need, so you don't have to add any additional acid. So two of the things you need are in that one little handy packet. You need a protein-based yarn, so wool, alpaca, silk, mohair. Animal fibers are protein-based, and so those are what you want. Uh, this technique will not work on cotton or acrylic. However, you can definitely use blends between wool and acrylic. Finally, you need heat. So today we'll be using a pot on the stovetop, but you can also use a microwave, which actually might be a little harder for dip dyeing, but you can use microwave for a heat source in general. You could use a crock pot. Uh, there are many options available. If you'd like to learn more about the Knit Crate subscriptions or Dyer Suppliers Bear Yarn, you can find my affiliate links in the video description. Full disclosure that as an affiliate marketer with these two companies, I do earn a commission on any sales generated through my links. And if you would like to save 20% off on your first month of a Knit Crate subscription, use the code CHEMNITS20 at checkout. Are you ready to go play with some color? Let's go get started. We are going to pre-soak our sparkle yarn in some plain tap water at room temperature to get it nice and wet so that way it'll absorb the color a little more evenly. I did add on a reusable nylon zip tie onto the yarn. I like to do this as both an extra tie and a really nice handy way to remove yarn and manipulate it in a dye pot. If you'd like to learn more about the zip ties or any of my other favorite tools and equipment for dyeing yarn, I will have links in the video description. In my pot, I have eight cups of water and I've started heating it up. The actual volume of water is not super critical, but eight cups is a comfortable volume for dyeing 100 grams of yarn. The two colors of Kool-Aid today we are gonna use are cherry and orange. Both are fairly pigmented colors and they will look really, really well together. Cherry is actually one of the most pigmented Kool-Aid packets. One of the big perks of using Kool-Aid to dye yarn is that in addition to the artificial food coloring, the Kool-Aid contains citric acid, which means that we don't have to add additional vinegar for the food coloring to bind to our yarn. When I'm dip dyeing with two colors, I prefer to start with the less pigmented color um, and then follow up with the more pigmented color. Uh, I find that that'll leave, enable me to have some control over how much red and how much orange we see in our finished yarn. So now I am going to stir to dissolve our orange Kool-Aid here in the pot and we're gonna let it heat up until it starts to boil. I gently squeezed out the excess water from our pre-soaked yarn, and now we can start dip dyeing. What is dip dyeing? Well, we're gonna place one end of our yarn into the pot and slowly dip it in and remove it. This allows more color to bind to the bottom of the skein, and you can even use like a little spoon or something to help, um, then at the top. Since we are gonna be using a second color, I'm not worried about trying to get this orange over the whole skein, but you can see that I do move the skein a bit 
as we are dipping in so that way the dye can access all of the fibers in the middle. Now, since it's Kool-Aid, the colors are absorbing really quickly. Uh, you can see really clearly we've got that darker orange and it's getting lighter and lighter. Uh, you could leave it like this and do it with one color as well. Uh, really, there's a lot of options and it is all up to you. If you'd like to intensify the color, you can supplement your pot with uh, some more liquid food coloring drops or even multiple packets of Kool-Aid. The more packets of Kool-Aid you add, the faster the colors will strike. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. But in a little over a minute, we completely cleared all of that orange color. And now I am going to remove the yarn set it aside so it can cool a bit. The reason why we want it to cool is just so that way I can move, say, the zip tie where I'm hoping to hold it to the other end. So then we can dip this again into the red color. If you have a lot more pigment in the pot, it will take longer for it to absorb, and you don't have to keep dipping until the dye has exhausted. You can just go until you are satisfied with your color. I am going to reuse the same dye pot for our cherry Kool-Aid, even if that means that we are gonna have more acid in here. But you are definitely welcome to use fresh water if you wanna keep the acid level a bit lower. Or, if you don't have other Kool-Aid and just want to use food coloring for your second color, there's still acid in here, so you can just add another food coloring color to dip into that. But I am going to add our packet of cherry Kool-Aid and stir things up so we are ready to go once that yarn has cooled. The yarn doesn't need to cool completely, it just needs to be cool, cool enough so I can transfer my nylon zip tie to the other side or that I can hold the other side comfortably in my hand to dip dye again. For the second color, I am going to dip the lightest shade into the red first and then dip dye up to the orange or however far I want to go. But you could also rotate it differently to get a different kind of variegated colorway. You could dip from the middle and end up with some, maybe having some of this more white left over. The choice is completely up to you. Okay, I just reduced the heat, so we're below, at a low boil, low simmer, and we are gonna start dipping into our cherry Kool-Aid. And we're gonna layer these colors together. And again, I like to move it as I dip and I go in and out sort of slowly. That lets some pigment go all the way through, but we're also letting most of the pigment bind to this end. And as another sort of alternate way that you can play around with this, you can take your yarn and let it sit and get a more, I guess, less of a gradient effect between the two colors. Again, these choices are all up to you. And at this point, with there being so much less color in, I could put the whole thing in, but I am trying to preserve a little bit of our orange that we have on this other end. But you can see our colorway is a little bit dominated by that cherry color. And slowly and slowly, our water is clearing. At this point, you know, with a quick dunk of the end, that little bit of pink that is left is not very much color at all. So you do have two choices. Uh, we could go and just set this aside um, and let it cool so we can wash it, or we can put the whole skein in the pot for a little while to help that color set. But um, I'm actually I'm going to go set this aside. I'm gonna let some of that water drain out and I am gonna leave it to cool so then we can go and wash it. But how is that for a beautiful colorway? I would say it's two color, but really we do have some intermediate red oranges in between and we created this with just two packets of Kool-Aid. And check out that beautiful sparkle in our yarn. Just to show that we can reuse these dye baths, um, I'm going to add 
some one, oh, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, approximately twelve drops of Americolor Forest Green to our cleared dye bath that we dyed with Kool Aid before. Let's stir things up. It is still hot. Here I have a dry skein of the Dyer Supplier Sparkle Sock, and I am going to add it to our pot, uh, stirring it around a bit so that way the yarn can access all of that color. And you can see just how pigmented it is already. Um, there is a lot of color in liquid drops. Uh, all food coloring in the U.S. is made of the same five to six molecules. Uh, blue number one, occasionally blue number two, red three, red 40, yellow five, and yellow six. So if you find any beverage mix or liquid or gel food coloring that contains that, you can use it to dye yarn. And our color is clearing nice and fast, but I am going to leave this in here for probably 15 minutes to let the rest of that color absorb. Okay, let's check on the yarn. And our dye bath has cleared. So I am actually gonna go and set aside this beautiful sparkly green tonal yarn until it cools completely before we wash it. If that's very important. We do want the yarn to cool completely. As soon as our yarn is cool, then we can wash it. Uh, we're going to be washing it in some plain tap water that is cool. And you can see that we aren't getting any bleeding here. Now, since we have flavor and other things in here, we do want to rinse it pretty well. And I'm going to add a little bit of some clear dish soap. The soap will help rinse out, I don't know if there's anything that could be stuck, but it also serves as just a chance to show that we really have no bleeding going on here today because our colors were properly set. Once we have rinsed out the soap completely, I will then go and hang up this yarn to dry. I have an automated spin dryer, which is helpful for removing some of the liquid from the yarn, but you could put the yarn through a salad spinner or something if you want it to dry a little faster, or really you can just hang it directly to drip dry. One other note of caution, our Selena is still extremely sparkly and shiny after we dyed the yarn um, using citric acid as the acid source. It is possible to add too much acid or to have your Stellina based yarn in acid for too long and to end up with the shimmer dulling a little bit. The two packets of Kool-Aid wasn't too much. In general, with Stellina based yarns, I typically will use vinegar because it's harder to get the pH too low when you're starting with food grade vinegar. Uh, so that is just something that I wanted to point out. But thankfully, I've never observed dulling of the Selena personally. Here is our finished dip dyed colorway, where we have a little bit of a cherry pink, some creamsicle orange, and then a blending of the colors in between. We achieved this color by dip dyeing the yarn into orange Kool-Aid and then into cherry Kool-Aid. This is just one of many fun ways that you can use Kool-Aid to dye yarn. Again, when you're dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid, you need to make sure that you have a protein-based yarn, so wool, alpaca, silk, etc. You need the artificial food coloring, heat, and some acid. And lucky for us, the Kool-Aid packets contain both that artificial food coloring and the amount of acid that we need. Unfortunately, there are limitations to the range of flavors and colors in the Kool-Aid line. But fortunately for us, bakers and cake decorators use a lot of different colors. And so there are so many different kinds of food coloring available that you can use to supplement the Kool-Aid pigments themselves or to reuse that leftover dye bath like we did here with some of a liquid Americolor food coloring. This green tunnel is really pretty. And I picked this particular hue because it's one that would be hard to do with just food coloring. 
but again, you can supplement your Kool-Aid colors with drops of any color imaginable to shift to get the colors and intensities that you want. And as for the sparkle, there is a lot of shimmer left in both of these skeins of yarn. The only color that is really hard to achieve with food coloring is a true black. For that, you probably will need to go to commercial dyes, but there are still so many different hues that you can achieve with food coloring, and it is a great way to get started with playing with adding color to your yarn. Well, there we have it. We created this beautiful sunset skein using one packet of orange and one packet of cherry Kool-Aid. And with the leftover citric acid dye bath, we created this beautiful teal and green skein as well. There are so many possibilities of what you can create with Kool-Aid and food coloring and yarn. Even the shawl I'm wearing today was dyed with food coloring. If you would like to learn more about how you can dye yarn with Kool-Aid, I have a video that's going to come out on the Knit Crate YouTube channel this month that will demonstrate how to kettle dye and speckle with Kool-Aid. Beyond that, I have a playlist full of videos dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And while you're at it, you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, and you don't want to miss a thing! In addition to food coloring and Kool-Aid, I love to explore commercial dyes, and if you would like to join me on the journey when I first tried commercial dyes, go and check out the Dye Pot Weekly series. I like to try things for the very first time on camera, so that way we can all learn from my mistakes and successes. I often like to say that I like to take risks, so that way you guys don't have to. Finally, I would like to give Knit Crate a huge, huge thank you for featuring me in their crates this month. It is a huge honor, and I am so excited to be able to share my passion for yarn dyeing with all of the Knit Crate customers. Again, to learn more about Knit Crate or Dyer Suppliers Bear Yarn, my affiliate links are in the video description, and you can use the code CHEMNITS20 to save 20% off your first month of a new Knit Crate subscription. Believe it or not, there are still some techniques that I have not yet explored with Kool-Aid. And there's going to be some more videos coming out in the month of May. Well, and in the future as well. But in May specifically, I have some more Kool-Aid videos in the queue. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching, everyone!